Hey, what's up everybody? I'm just back again with another weekly pickups haul. I actually found quite a bit once again this week, so um, yeah, let's just go ahead and get started with my local shop finds. I think I only picked up, I guess, technically two actual new releases this week, so the first one was Thanos 17. Uh, so I decided to check out, you know, what all the hype is about behind this book. I've never read a Thanos book before, and I just never, honestly, I've never seen one on the shelf since uh, Donnie Cates took over. So I decided, you know, it was actually there on the shelf. So, hey, why not check it out? No, it wasn't disappointed. I, I was really intrigued by what was going on. Uh, I'm not 100% familiar with everything, obviously, that's going on in Thanos because I've been reading it. But um, I really like Thanos versus the Hulk in this. It reminded me of the Hulk from the Hulk the End that I talked about in a previous video. I don't know if it was supposed to be the exact character or not. It seemed like it actually could have been. Um, so I'll definitely be checking this out in a trade or a hardcover or something somewhere down the line instead of trying to get all the individual issues, which are pretty blown up in price at this point. So uh, yeah, pretty interesting read. And then I'll just go ahead and show this because I don't really have much to say about it. Got this World of Krypton free sampler. I think it reprints... Uh, the World of Krypton from John Byrne from back in the day. Um, so my shop had a ton of these. I figured it's all free. And I'll just go in the stack. So there we go. Uh, and my other book I picked up, uh, Incredible Hulk 714. It's the World War Hulk number two. Um, I was just kind of intrigued by the cover, I guess. I don't know really why I picked this up. I've been reading this series either. But um, I always was a fan of the Greg Pak Hulk from whenever they did the original Planet Hulk and World War Hulk, so I figured I didn't know they were doing a World War Hulk too, so I checked it out, and I probably need to do a little bit of back issue reading on this, because I didn't really fully understand what was happening in this story, but like I said, I'll probably end up, I don't know if um, it might be on Marvel Unlimited about six months down the line, I might just check these out that way then. Um, and then once again this week I decided to get another G.I. Joe stack of books. So I had the first 10 and then 21 through 30, so I get that silent issue. So of course I had to go back and finally pick up 11 through 20. Uh, so once again, they're buck 50 a book, so not too bad. Unfortunately, uh, they're beaters, but they're not as bad as the one through 10, obviously. There's so far no centerfolds missing or wadded up, crumpled up covers, which uh, I'm just disappointed that one's jacked up. But like I said, I'm, I'm extremely glad to have it for a buck 50. Uh, anyway, here's issue 11, uh, number 12, which has, yeah, I guess it's not in terrible shape. There's one that was like actually super faded. Um, I, 13, I believe this is the cameo of Destro. And then probably, yeah, the main reason I did get this law one at issue 14, which I believe this is supposed to be, uh, the first appearance of Destro in the G.I. Joe comic. So Destro is always one of my top favorite G.I. Joe villains. So I definitely, I'm glad to own that book. Then issue 15, Snake Eyes falling out of a plane, it looks like. Yeah, I'm sure he'll be all right. <laughs> uh, 16, once again, they're fighting Destro in that. 17, number 18. And unfortunately, I ran out of bag and board, so I had to use an old bag to do 19 and 20. So that'll be fixed soon. So there's 19, and then number 20. So... I now own G.I. Joe's 1 through 30. So, happy to have those. There's books, once again, I've been looking for those for a long time, so just to see those pop up randomly in my local shop, couldn't be happier. Um, <clears throat> actually, I do have a pretty big haul for my local shop of just, uh, they are just clearing out some independent stuff, so this whole stack right here I got for 90% off. So, for 40 and 30 cents, I could not pass up these books. <laughs> so... I said nothing groundbreaking or, you know, like stealth buy or anything like that. But, you know, you got 40 and 30 cent image and IDW books. You can't beat that. So, uh, buddy was telling me, you know, I got the uh, Lex Luger icon in my uh, YouTube video. Puts a smile on my face every time I see it, so I have to keep it. So, um, here's ringside number one. A buddy uh, recommended this to me as a, you know, a comic book fan and a wrestling fan. So, I'll definitely be reading this for 40 cents. You know, why not? Um, next up, Revival number one. I got a fourth print, unfortunately. If they had the first print in there, I would have probably did a cartwheel in the middle of the store for 30 cents. I mean, come on. So, I actually have already have the trade of this, but I did not have an actual cover or copy of the actual issue on. So, at least I have a fourth print for a little over a quarter. 
can't complain about that. Uh, and then next up, I found this. I don't know if this is a mini series or if it goes on past four issues, uh, but I found Captara numbers one through four. It's a Chip Z blah, sorry, Chip Zdarsky series. Yeah, sorry, his last name's a little bit of a mouthful for me. Um, so obviously, most of you probably know who Chip Zdarsky is at this point. I've never really read a lot of his work. I, I've went, been wanting to read a little bit more of his stuff. Uh, so for 35 cents a piece, I decided to check these out. Um, so there's number three and then number four. And sorry if I'm going through these a little bit fast, but I still got a little bit of a stack going. <laughs> so I do apologize for that. Uh, next up, speaking of Donnie Cates, um, they had a few God Countries in there, which I was shocked to see. I didn't even know what the store had God Country. I never see them on the shelves. And then somehow they're in these 90% off bins. Um, I have the first issue only. I got it in when I bought an image blind box last year. I think I got only one copy came in my blind box, unfortunately. At least I have the blind box variant. But anyway, um, I found issues four through six. Uh, so there's issue four, number five, and number six. Of course, all for 39 cents. So hopefully I can find issues two and three somewhere so I can kind of complete that six issue set. <clears throat> Next up, got a little bit of a J. Scott Campbell lot. So, who could pass up J. Scott Campbell stuff for 40 cents a piece? So, there's a Danger Girl number four from the IDW run. So, like I said, once again, you, anything that's J. Scott Campbell, one dollar or less, I'm probably going to end up picking up if it's not my collection already. Um, and actually, this kind of isn't a J. Scott Campbell, but it is a Danger Girl. I uh, found this Alex Gardner variant for Danger Girl number one. I think it was the previous IDW run from the one I just showed. Um, I think it's actually Danger Girl Trinity number one. Like, so I'm not 100% familiar with his Danger Girl work. Um, but I think it started off of Image, I think, and then went to IDW, something like that. And then here's Danger Girl Revolver. Nice J. Scott Campbell cover on that, too. So like I said... It's less than a dollar. It's J. Scott Campbell. Probably going to end up picking it up. So there's that. And then my last lot, I actually found a, a little six-issue miniseries. 40 cents a piece, of course. Um, <clears throat> it's Phonogram from Karen Gillan and Jamie McKelvey. Um, so from their Wicked and Divine work, I'm, I've become a pretty decent fan, I think, of their work. I've, I like their Young Avengers stuff a lot, and I've really dived into the Wicked and the Divine stuff in the last few months. So I've got... The first two hard covers of that and i've been very happy with those if you guys need a new image title to check out or i should say you know one to get in back issues and hard covers and trades wicked and divine you can't go wrong um but anyway i found phonogram the i think it's yeah it's all six of the immaterial go run so like i said i look forward to reading these so there's issue one number two and I wish these spines were a little bit better, but these are in long boxes and not bagged and boarded. So, unfortunately, you kind of get your 40 cents worth on the spine ticks, too. But it is what it is. They're, I, I just look forward to reading these. That's the main reason I got them. And I cannot wait to finally get a day off and get a chance to read these. And then there is issue six. And like I said, if you guys can track down the trades, if you not, have not already, and you're just looking for, you know, a comic book of something different than superhero stuff, absolutely, Wicked and Divine, you, you cannot go wrong. Um, speaking of Wicked and the Divine, like I said earlier, I've, I've been collecting it through um, the two main hardcovers, which I, I have somewhere over there in that crazy insanity of a comic room, I guess. Um, I actually found a decent eBay haul that had two issues I paid $6 ship for these. Um, actually, it's cheaper than cover. Wow, I don't know. I, I, I'll actually probably link this eBay seller in the description below because these are really good condition books. They are set in fullbacks and mylar, and they were cheaper for cover than these. So here's the DCBS uh, Wicked and Divide number one variant cover. So like I said, usually this book I thought goes for like at least a $10 bill a piece. I thought I could be wrong. But it's a really good book, and I think it's absolutely worth that if it's not already, if that makes sense. Uh, so there's the Lucifer variant. I really like this cover. Um, <laughs> this might go up on my wall. I absolutely love this character in this book. So like I said, check this book out if you haven't. I cannot recommend it enough. And then the um, 
the variant. Oh, what's the guy's name? You're going to kill me if I don't figure it out. It's the guy who does Snot Girl and that stuff. I'll think of it at the very end of the video. I apologize. Just got off work. Sorry. <laughs> um, nonetheless, this is the, I think it, they had an A, a B, and a C covered issue one. Um, this was the C cover, I believe. Brian Lee O'Malley, that's the name. Good, I'm glad I thought of him. Uh, so this was the C cover to issue one. Kind of was looking for the A cover. I think that's probably my favorite of all of these covers. Um, I think the B cover was like this, except I think it had a white background and she obviously looked more normal uh, than her dark super Lucifer mode here. Um, but nonetheless, I'm extremely happy to have these two books. Um, I was hoping to at least get an issue one of Wicked and Divine and somehow I found two for six dollars. So, uh, and fullbacks and mylar. So, like I said, I the name escapes me of the uh, eBay buyer because I just don't memorize that type of stuff, um, and I usually don't give them plugs like this on my videos. But wow, I, these shipped really fast. And like I said, mylar's <laughs> you can't beat that. Um, speaking of awesome sellers, uh, my last lot came from the Great Legends auction, and it came from the Amazing Murfinator. Um, I just want to apologize for the, to the Amazing Murfinator because this was such a good deal on my end. I almost kind of feel bad for winning this lot. I, I think it was, what, $40 shipped. And the guy sent it first class shipping, no extra cost to me. So, Murfinator, if you're actually watching this, thank you so much for this lot. This, was, this is awesome. Um, that being said, I've never been a huge Punisher guy. Uh, but there are certain Punisher books I've always wanted to collect and put in my collection. Um, so there were a lot of number ones and stuff. I figured at least I'd start to get some of the number ones of the series and that type of stuff. Um, and then during the Great Legends auction, it was like two and a half hours plus into one of his auctions. You know, most of you guys know how they go, which they're always awesome and fun. Uh, don't get me wrong. But it was late. Uh, a lot of people are tuning out and, you know, the auctioneers are still nice enough to be throwing up books. Um. So Murfinator put up this awesome Punisher lot, which, like I said, I cannot believe people were not bidding on this. I think only Lady Bear was the only other bidder on this. So I don't know what people were thinking or if they just all fell asleep watching the auction, but in my opinion, I got a little bit of a steal on this. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and show the books. Um, so the first one I want to show, this is the Garth Ennis Punisher Max uh, issue one of that awesome run. So this is some of the best Garth Ennis you can find. It's got those awesome Tim Bradstreet covers. Um... So as soon as I showed this, I knew I was going to be bidding on it because actually I was looking for this number one for a little while. So uh, next up, we got the John Romita Jr. 90s run of Punisher Warzone. So it's got that die cast cover where like uh, there's like bolt holes that cut that um, skull right there. So that's pretty awesome. Die cast 90s s cover. You guys probably know by now I love my 90s covers. Uh, next up... From 1988, Punisher War Journal number one. This is uh, the Carl Potts on the art. I might actually try to get this signed next Friday. I think he's going to be Indiana Comic Con. Um, so if he's there, I'll probably at least try to get this book signed. So looking forward to that. And then from the previous year, 87, Punisher number one. Um, I think this is like the first ongoing, that yeah, unlimited series, even though... Close to one year later, there was another Punisher number one. So you know how Marvel works at this point. Um, so that's the Klaus Jansen run that he did the interiors and that stuff, I believe, on that. And then where the real, I, like I said, I, I cannot believe he was putting these books up for that cheap. He, he put in the Mike Zeck run, the entire thing, uh, one through five, which I think he only did one through four and then added five later. But, I mean, I've been keeping my eye on these on eBay and stuff for a little while, so I'm extremely happy to have these. Um, so there's issue one, and sorry for that Mylar glare, but who can beat that? <laughs> um, and like I said, these are in pretty solid condition, too. I cannot complain about that. Um, issue number two. And actually, I think I'm going to try to get these signed, too. Uh, I just found out, I think he's going to Cincinnati Comic Expo in September, Mike Zek is. So I know he usually charges for his signature, but it's so dang pretty. I think I'm going to try to get these signed, or at least the first issue. We'll see. Uh, there's number four, and then the last one is number five. So thanks again to the amazing Murfinator. I'll put the link to his channel in the description below. Um, like I said, thanks again, man. I, I mean, it's class right there, absolutely. So if you guys are ever bidding on those live auctions and see him put a bid, or I'm sorry, an auction up, you guys can bid with confidence. These books shipped extremely fast. 
priority shipping and everything, Mylars and most of it, which, you know, a lot of people don't use Mylars at all. <laughs> so once again, thank you, Murphinator. I'll be putting your link in the, below, the description below. Um, other than that, I just want to thank my subscribers. I'm up to 90 now. Wow. <laughs> so they just keep climbing and climbing every week. So hopefully at least five or six people are watching this video and enjoying it. That's all I, you know, kind of asked for. Just, you know, show my books, have a couple people to talk to about those books. Cause I really, there's not a lot of people I know who still collect comics like I do. Um, so the main reason I make these videos is just to chat with you guys in the comments below and chat with you guys in the live chat. So I appreciate all that. And other than that, subscribe, comment, thumbs, usual. Thank you so much. Have a good night.